Hello, everyone. When I first submitted this session proposal, I gave it a title, Six Principles of the Next Generation Developer Portal. But that was half a year ago, and my memory isn't that great. So today I'll talk about five principles of the Next Generation Developer Portal. I'm joking, I'm under supervision here. So I will cover all six principles. My name is Mike Budzinski. I'm a product manager at Azure API Management. It's a Microsoft cloud computing API management solution. I've been at Microsoft for a few years now. I've collaborated with top talent engineers, with wonderful customers. I've never seen anyone taller than myself. So at least that's where I shine. The top three things that I love in my life are French movies, French desserts, and API Days Paris. <laughs> I recently led an effort of building a new developer portal from scratch for many, many of our customers, or for thousands of our customers. And before we even started building the developer portal, we made a very extensive research regarding the developer portals, the web development trends, web design trends, we listened to feedback from our customers and we distilled the essence of the developer portals. Then, based on these findings, we came up with six principles. We came up with more principles, but today I will cover six principles. The principles that led our technical decisions. And these principles are universal, and I will show them to you today. I will present them to you today. And every principle is followed by an example how we incorporated it in practice and how you might be able to incorporate it as well. So all the references to, to the product are for educational purposes only. So let's get started. The principle number one is to architect for effortless scalability. We wanted to make sure that the developer portal will be able to serve a mass of concurrent visitors on the web without consuming too many resources of too much resources of the API management product. So it should be able to scale without affecting other parts of the product, like for example, the management interface or the API gateway part. We also wanted to make sure that the architecture is simple enough for easy maintainability, both on your side as the customers, as well as on our side as the providers of the product. How did we achieve that? We decided to go with a lightweight Jamstack architecture. For those of you who are not familiar with Jamstack, Jam stands for JavaScript APIs and Markup. What it means in practice is that every piece of content, so every page, every style, every configuration, etc., is stored as markup documents, JSON documents in our case, which are then compiled, built into static HTML pages and static media files like JPEGs, PNGs, etc. Then any dynamic data, like for example user information or a list of APIs that I am authorized to see, is fetched through APIs, letter A, on runtime from the client side JavaScript from the browser. So this is an example how it looks like in practice. When I open the developer portal and open the browser, First, I uh, fetch all the HTML pages and, and media, and then additional data is fetched using the APIs. So it's, you can think of it as a microservice in web development trends. There is no databases that are coupled with the portal, so there is fewer bottlenecks and fewer things that can go wrong. The principle number two, allow extensibility. We are very fortunate to have many, many customers, from small businesses to very specific niche players, to startups, to medium-sized businesses, to government organizations, to global enterprises, which are the biggest in the world. However, each one of you probably has, you have your own requirements, and we are not able to serve all these particular requirements, especially if they are specific to yourself only. So for example, your requirement might be after using two years of using a developer portal, to integrate it with a custom built-in-house support system. And we are not even aware of the support system, so we cannot do it for you. Our goal was to allow our customers 
to extend the developer portals themselves, like power users, if they really, really need to. How can you allow extensibility? So we did two things. First, the developer portal is built around components. And second, it is open source. Being open source means it's hosted on GitHub. Uh, of course, not only code, but also project roadmap, wiki, issues, and pull requests. And components are anything that you want to place on a page. So for example, a sign-in form is a component, a button is a component, an image is a component, text is a component, a list of APIs is a component, etc. So if you don't require any components that we don't have, so if, if all you need is already there, you can just use the portal that's built into your API management product. But if you require more things, you just fork this GitHub repository, write your own component, code it yourself, and then you need to host the portal yourself. Speaking of hosting, the next principle is enable easy deployments anywhere. That's partially of this approach that we took. But we also have customers who want to use developer portal on premises, not in the cloud, just for performance or maybe, uh, or maybe some other uh, requirements. So how can you enable easy deployments anywhere? This comes as a side effect of our previous decisions. So this choice of Jamstack technology means that there is the static size generation step which outputs the HTML and media files. So very uh, easy and simple files, no databases, etc. So that's kind of the technology of, of the 90s. And then uh, being open source means that you have access to all the tools and you can run this generation step yourself. You can run it on localhost, you can run it in the cloud, you can run it whenever, wherever you want to run it. So once you have this output of the portal, once you have those static HTML pages and media files, you can host them however you want to host them. The easiest way probably is to upload them to a cloud storage account, optionally front with CDN, it's just literally drag and drop. More complex ways is you can, for example, package it, package it in a Docker container image and uh, put a proxy layer inside like Nginx and then host it on Kubernetes if you, if you really like complexity. This is an example of this static site generation step. So the easiest way to do it is, in the, is on localhost. This is an example of how it works in the cloud. So the first arrow, you just trigger the publishing worker, so that step from your local machine. And then, as an input, you feed the code repository of the portal and also the content of the portal, so all the pages, settings, etc. And then, then this Azure function, for example, or AWS Lambda or whatever, uh, works and outputs the static files. Principle number four, accelerate go to market. We wanted to make sure that our customers can go to market as soon as, as we enable them to. So that means minimizing the time it takes from the first administrative sign into the portal to the prototype, POC, MVP, first release of the portal, and then consequent releases. How can you accelerate go to market? For us, we achieved it by providing a set of feature for uh, providing default content of the developer portal. So this default content has been carefully crafted. It follows the latest design trends, meaning transitions, uh, animations, navigation, colors, gradients, visual components, etc. It's been thoroughly tested for accessibility, meaning that everyone can access the portal even if they are not able, for example, to use a mouse or a touch screen. We also made sure that it works across different screen sizes and across different devices, and it has a clear structure by default that we suggest you use, but of course you can change it. This is an example here. So as you can see, this is the landing page that is automatically provisioned when you first access the developer portal as an administrative user. And it's fully configurable. But on the top, of course, there is a logo, navigation, then call to action buttons, strong points of your solution, about us section, gallery of featured APIs, 
technical uh, code sample for technical user, customer references, and then you can jump right into the list of APIs, which are presented in a clean table. You can group them by tags, etc. And then you can go directly to API reference for a particular API, which means seeing all the API operations, versions, details of the API, details of API operations, so request, responses, payloads, and the interactive console on the right. Principle number five, tailored to administrators, content editors, designers, and developers. So it's important to realize that developer portals are used by many different users, and there are two circles of users. One is API providers, which is typically you know, companies that provide APIs, sell APIs, and that includes administrators, content editors, and designers. And then the second circle is API consumers, which is many developers who build applications that use those APIs, but it can also be business decision makers, like product managers, or maybe strategy people. How can you tailor to all these roles? We build a set of features for each one of these roles. So for example, for administrators, we provided a role-based access control, meaning that they can scope permissions for other uh, editors of the portal, what they can or can't do. So for example, they can grant person A a permission to edit tutorial for API 1, person B to edit tutorial for API 2, and person C not to edit any page, but just tell the portal and colors and margins, etc. So that would be a designer. For content editors, we provided a very intuitive and simple to use a drag and drop visual editor. So those, these components that you place on the pages, you just drag and drop them, you can easily configure them. For designers, we have a styling guide, which is a central location, a page with all the elements, visual elements throughout the developer portal, where you can style them, and that ensures consistency that this overview all these elements are used throughout the developer portal and no other elements. And lastly, for uh, users, for the visitors of the portal, for API consumers, we wanted to also minimize the time it takes them to retrieve or learn certain information. So we made sure that the navigation is correct, that they can easily navigate throughout the portal, they can test APIs and uh, search, for example, for APIs if there are thousands of APIs. This is an example of the administrative interface. These two panels on the left and on the bottom. So you can jump between the pages. You can browse the layouts, which are templates, how pages are displayed, media gallery, settings of the portal, and, and navigation menu, and more. So in this example, I will go back to the landing page, and I will remove the top header text and the description, the tagline from the landing page. So literally just two clicks. And then I will also change this image that we provision by default to an image that matches my brand. I had already uploaded the image before, so I will just pick this black computer here, save the page, and now I will navigate to the styling guide. As you can see, you can import any Google font. You can style the typography. You can change the colors. I will change the primary blue color to black so that it matches the image that I uploaded. And then you can also optionally, optionally style other elements like buttons, forms, video players, images, navigation, menus, and more. Now when I go back to the landing page, it's completely different. It took me literally five clicks or something around that to change it in total. Principle number six, embrace DevOps. DevOps is very, very popular among our customers, and there are usually three reasons why they want to use DevOps. The first reason is if you want to migrate the portal or any other information between environments. So you have, a, for example, development environment, testing environment, staging environment, and production environment, and then you want to make sure you migrate all of this across the environments. Second reason is backups. So you want to perform backups periodically, for example, every day or every week, and then, of course, be able to restore the backup if something goes wrong. The third reason is if you want to enable certain, set up certain processes in your organization, like, for example, manual reviews of the changes. 
And we wanted to make sure that DevOps is a first-class citizen of the new developer portal. And how did we achieve that? We achieved it by making all the content, so all the pieces of the content, like pages, styling, etc., accessible through REST API. So these JSON documents, you can download them or upload them through REST API. We also provided scripts in the GitHub repository for migrating between environments, for backups, so that's very easy to do. They are well documented. You don't need to write any of your tools. And lastly, in future, we're thinking of enabling people to put this content as part of a source control, so a Git repository where you can see all the commits and, and changes. This is an example of the REST API. As you can see, this particular endpoint has a few HTTP verbs, get, put, patch, delete. It takes the content type ID, which is in this case page, and the content item ID, which is an ID of the page. Uh, this is trimmed, uh, trimmed, shortened for the purpose of this presentation. This is a page localized into two languages, English, American English, and Russian. And uh, this document is, is, of course, much, much bigger. So the main takeaway is here, the six principles of the next generation developer, developer portal. I still have a few minutes. If you want to take a picture, it's the best time right now. So principle number one, architect for effort scalability. Principle number two, allow extensibility. Principle number three, enable easy deployments anywhere. Principle number four, accelerate go to market. Principle number five, tailor to administrators, content editors, designers, and developers, principle number six, embrace DevOps. These principles are, again, universal. They guided our decisions, and hopefully they can also guide your decisions, whether you are managing a developer portal, building a developer portal, or maybe choosing or collaborating with someone on a developer portal. If you have any questions, please uh, ping me on Twitter. My handle is mbudzinski. And if you would like to learn more about our product, or access other resources around APIs that we prepared for you. For example, ebooks, uh, recordings from other sessions, from other conferences, blog posts, etc. You can access them at this link, aka.ms slash apimlove. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to address them. I'm not sure. I think we have five minutes. Yeah, so if there are any questions, we have five minutes. There is a question in the back. <laughs> the question is if there is a timeline for putting the content in the source control. Uh, there is no timeline right now. It's something that we are considering. We haven't committed to it yet, but I'd be happy to get your feedback on this. Uh, we will always listen to our customers. There is another question. Uh, how easy is to integrate a third-party uh, authorization supply, um, provider, like open it to? Uh... Yeah, what's what's a third-party uh, authorization in this case? Is it uh, like online identity provider, or is it uh, AD or Auth2, or what particular? Uh, like an example, Okta, which Okta. is providing a unified login and. A... Yes. So uh, this is global for our product. It's not specific only to API management. So we support uh, out of the box uh, basic authentication with username and password. We support AD, which is Azure, uh, Azure authentication, Active Directory authentication. We support online identity providers like Google, Microsoft, Twitter, and uh, one more I don't remember right now. And then we also support delegation. So delegation means that you actually delegate all the calls, like for example, get access to this API or sign in to your own custom server. In this case, it could be an Okta, Okta server. Any more questions? Yes, uh, yeah. another one. Uh, can a single uh, developer portal support multiple APIM instances? 
No. I mean, technically, yes, but you would, you would need to do it yourself. It's not very easy to do. And typically, you want to, you can have multiple developer portals for one, uh, for one API management service, but not the other way around. Do you have any more questions? There is one here. There. Well, is there a support for monetization? Uh, organization? For monetization. Of monetization. Yes. The question is if there is support for monetization. We don't have support for monetization in our product out of the box because what we've learned from our customers is that every customer wants to have a different monetization pipeline. So what we provide you is all the data, who, who has access to what API, and how they call APIs. And based on the data, you can derive certain monetization uh, models. So for example, you have a subscription model based on who has access to API and be your customers on a weekly or monthly basis. Or you can have a model where you build them for number of requests because you have this data yourself as well. Or you can derive a hybrid model based on mix of these two. Thank right. you, Mike. Yeah, I thank think you very much. there's no more questions then. Thank you again. Thank you.